Hello, it's Mrs. McCullough, and this is the last lesson in our series about how readers question and predict. So let's do a review. You see, we learned the song. Sing it with me. Read, read, read the text question while you go. Predict what will happen next. Read on so you'll know. And we've learned a lot of things in this series. We've learned that even before you start reading the words in the text, that you can do a preview. Yes, you can put on your mask and you can steal as much information as possible from the title and the headings and the photos and the captions and the table of contents and the maps, all of those things. We look through every page or every section of the article and we see, is there anything we can steal? Is there anything that we can look at to get some more information about what this passage is about? We were information thieves. And then, as we start reading, we question while we go. We wonder, hmm, I wonder why this is happening. Or, hmm, I wonder why the character acted that way. Or, hmm, I wonder how long that facet takes, okay? So we do lots of wonderings, but then we also sometimes get to things that make us confused. And we're like, eh, what does that mean? Or, ah, uh, well, why is this part going on? I'm really confused. I don't understand. And so we have some confusions in the middle of our reading. We're always also thinking of ahead. We're also thinking about what might come next. And we do this by collecting those details and then thinking about them with our thinking voice, with our our yellow thinking voice, we start looking for patterns and memories and then we say, oh, I know what's going to happen next or oh, I know what it's going to say. And so we, some people call that making a guess, but we learned that it's really an inference. A prediction is a form of an inference. And then we found out that we read on so you'll know and that when we get more information in the text, then we either have to confirm, yep, that's what we thought was going to happen, we'll confirm it, or we might have to adjust our thinking just a little bit because we've learned something new. Whew, we've learned a lot of stuff in this series. And now what I want you to know is that readers also write about what they've been reading. In the past session, we talked about in the past series, I should say, we talked about how that readers can retell and summarize in writing. Well, what we've learned this time was about a, a lot of new words, a lot of new vocabulary, and that's something that you can include in your writing. So if you were confused or you were wondering certain things, you can now write about those in sentences or a paragraph. So when you do that, you always want to make sure that you're using this new vocabulary, this really important vocabulary that we were trying to figure out when we were like, eh, I'm confused by this word. Well, once we figured it out based on text features, based on the glossary, based on the context clues, now we want to be sure that we are really including that in our writing. So let's go back to this coyote and badger article from Newzella. Remember when we were reading about that? Okay, so we learned in the second page about some new words that maybe we didn't know before. Wild animals travel and move around to hunt or migrate. And we were like, ah, what's migrate mean? And we went back to reread. Remember that? We reversed and we went back to reread and we figured out what that word means. Wild animals travel and move around to hunt or migrate. Yes. So if we were going to write about this passage, we want to include something that we've learned. And we learned that coyote and badger were traveling together, which seemed unusual. Remember? Because two different animals and they're traveling together. We also learned a really important word, migrate. So 
I'm going to think about that. How can I retell or summarize what I've learned in this passage, making sure I use that new vocabulary word? Well, what if I say something like, the coyote and badger travel together looking for food as they migrate? Maybe something like that. Or coyote and badger migrate to hunt for food. Coyote and badger migrate together. Yeah, actually, I wrote it down already in a sentence. Coyote and badger migrate together, moving to a different place for food. Yeah, that's what they were doing, right? So a reader will write down new information that they've learned and they'll always use that new vocabulary word. So I'm just gonna add this over here to my chart. So it's just a sentence, that's all it is. It could be a couple of sentences, but I wanna make sure I'm including this new vocabulary word that I've learned. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom of this page. We hope this video will inspire people to treat coyotes with compassion instead of cruelty, Block said. Okay, when we got to that word compassion and I said, eh? what does that word mean? And remember, we, we fast forward, we read on compassion instead of cruelty. And we know that cruelty means mean. And instead is telling me that it's the opposite. So compassion instead of meanness. So nice, be nicer. Um, okay, so now I have to think about how will I retell this? How will I summarize what I've learned in this passage um, and maybe put it into a sentence, okay? So let's see, I wanna make sure I use that word. So the video will help people be more compassionate towards coyote. The people will care more and show compassion towards coyotes after watching the video. Something like that, okay? So I wrote it down. The video might help people show compassion and caring to coyotes. Okay, so I summed up what I read and I told it in my own words, but I made sure I used that new vocabulary word because that's what we learned. Okay, so it's time for you to try it. It's time for you to go into the passages that we were working on together and see if you can reword it a little bit, but making sure you're using that new vocabulary word we learned. Okay, so let's go into um, who was here. Remember that one about the animal tracks? And let's look at this part about the moose. The moose are the largest type of deer. Male moose may weigh more than 1,400 pounds. They have wide cloven or split hooves that help them walk in deep snow. And remember when we got to cloven, we were like, Meh? what does that word mean? Okay, so how can we talk about the moose and include that word cloven, that new word cloven. Remember what it means? Yeah, the split. Remember we had to fast forward cloven or split in their hooves. And we looked at the picture here and we can see how it is split. There's two pieces to the foot. Okay, so now how are we going to word that? How do you want to say it? The moose has to help it. Yeah, something like that. I think so. How about, were you thinking it like this? A moose can walk in deep snow because of the split in its cloven hooves. Were you thinking about something like that? Yes. And so do we have the word cloven? Yes. Do we have what we learned about it, that it's a split? Yes. Okay, so we're retelling what we read and we're making sure we're using that new vocabulary word. That's what readers will do. So I'm going to add that one over here to the side. 
All right, let's try one more. You're getting really good at this. Let's try another one. Here we go. Let's look at the one about the beaver. And so we were reading that they use tree trunks, branches, and mud to build dams and rivers, and also to build their lodges or homes. Eh? What's a lodge? Remember that? We were confused. What's a lodge? Well, did we reread? We tried. Did that help us? Nope. And then we fast forward. And what does lodge mean? A home for a beaver. That's right. And so let's think about how we can write our own sentence. So what would you say about the beavers? The beavers, hmm, build a home called a lodge. You could say that. The beavers use trees to help build a lodge so they have a home. That's a good one too. How about this one? The beavers use tree branches to build a lodge for shelter. How's that sound? You like that? Yes, any of those work. Remember, we use the word lodge. It's something new that we've been learning. So we're retelling what we learned from this informational text and we're using the new vocabulary word. That's what readers want to do. Okay, so now I think you could do this on your own. You could write a couple of sentences for some of the other pages that we were looking at. So remember when we went to the um, camel section? Remember when we went there? But there were some words. Did you find that word that was like, nah, I don't know what that means. And then did you read on? Venomous. That's right. And venomous means what? Poisonous. And the author tells us in the next part. Good, good, good. And then the jaguar. Remember when they were talking about their sharp claws and they can retract? And what does that mean? Pull in. They can pull them back in. Yes. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to go into one of these pages and I want you to work on trying to reword it, trying to tell it in your own word, but in your own words, but make sure you're using that new vocabulary word as well, because that's something new that you learned when you are ah, confused and now you know what it means because you use the context clues. So put that in your writing. And then guys, go back to service dogs and look at any of the words that you are ah, confused about. And you use text features like the picture, use the glossary, you used um, all of the other sentences, you reversed, you fast forward. And so now you can tell what you learned about service dogs in a sentence or two, making sure you're using that new vocabulary word. That's what you would do if you were in Mrs. McCullough's class, but your teacher might have an even better idea.